Hello, I'm Theo Gerkema, a fiscal oceanographer at NEOS, and I will tell you something about uh, what we are doing here at NEOS in the Wadden Sea. And I have called my uh, talk Exchanges in the Wadden Sea, and it's also because the Wadden Systems Research Center is itself a center of exchange. Um, here we have a look of the Wadden Sea from the Dutch coast to Denmark, and there are tides, currents, waves, which bring about uh, movements and exchanges within the Wadden Sea and also with the adjacent North Sea. So we have exchanges of fresh water from rivers and sluices, which end up in the North Sea of sediment, nutrients. And we are studying these processes at NEOS and we do that in two ways. We do measurements on the one hand with the ship, the Navicula, with which we can carry out measurements in the Wadden Sea. And we are also doing numerical modeling. So we use hydrodynamic models to understand the movements in the Wadden Sea and to simulate the effects that are actually there. So the tides, the effects of wind, fresh water, etc. And here in this figure you see, by way of example, a simulation of the distribution of fresh water during one month coming from the sluices in the afsluit dike, so one at Den Oever, and there you see the fresh water spreading to the left, to the Mars Deep, and on the, in the other sluice from Kornwerder Zand you see it moving towards the east. And this is actually the first time that we've got a clear picture of how the fresh water distributes itself through the Wadden Sea. And we can also study the circumstances in which it moves this way. Now to get the first impression of the movements of the tides, I have here a plot of the Dutch Wadden Sea, and the numbers in the figure indicate the amount of water that's going in and out with the tide, with the ebb and flood, in a million cubic meters. So, for example, in the Mars Deep, there's about 1,000 million or a billion cubic meters of water going in and out with every movement of the tide. Uh, from this figure, you see that the Mars Deep and the Vlie are by far the largest inlets in terms of tidal prism, that is, the amount of water being exchanged. But this is water going just back and forth, and it doesn't tell us where the net changes are. And to study that, we need again the model. But we can also do it with observations, and here's an example from measurements that we took in 2012 in the Vlie Inlet in the main channel on two different days, the 22nd of March, the 15th of May. And what you see here is a timeline, so throughout one tidal cycle of about 12 hours, of the fluxes of water and suspended sediment in that channel. And we see from this figure that the positive values, which are app, so that's going out. We see that at late app, sediment is going out, and at early flood, sediment is coming back in. But the amounts are about equal. So that's the difficulty of knowing what, in the end, is the net effect of all these exchanges, because there are huge amounts going in and out. But what is, in the long run, the net effect? And we can't even tell that from these measurements because they are only two days and they don't cover all the circumstances that we might have in the Wadden Sea. Uh, in particular, there is an extreme variability due to wind and we can already tell that from this figure because on the 15th of May there is a lot less sediment being transported than on the 22nd of March and the wind direction was very different on these occasions. And so we are coming back to our numerical models in which we can study just all circumstances, including storms, when it's actually difficult to do measurements at sea. And this makes it possible to study the long-term balances. And from this figure we see that the watershed south of Ter Schelling has actually a large transport to the east, although it is a very shallow area. But this is a yearly mean value. It doesn't mean that every day there is a transport to the east. It's really on very strong events with strong winds, high water levels due to storms, that there's a large movement to the east, and that stamps the yearly average. 
And so from this figure, we get a view of the net transports of water in the Walden Sea, and we can do similar things for sediment, for example. We are studying that right now. To sum up, what sort of information do we have here in this center? We have, first of all, in situ measurements taken with the ship. And you see here some samples of suspended sediment that we took in the Vlie Inlet. And on the right, you see a timeline from the upper panels early in the morning till in the early evening in the lower panels. And we see the cross section of the Vlie Inlet. And in the left panels, the optical backscatter, which is a measure of the amount of suspended sediment in the water column. And on the right, salinity. So we see this during late ebb that uh, sediment is going out and with early flood it's coming back again. On the other hand we have also long-term measurements and that can be the Niels jetty with, which measures temperature, salinity and other quantities. We have also Teso ferry data which is just a ferry that goes back and forth from Den Helder to Tessel and which measures currents, velocity and we have poles and this gives a lot of physical parameters. And in particular, temperature measurements go back till the 19th century. So we have a very good view of the monthly average temperature in this long stretch of time of 150 years. And finally, we have the numerical models, which give us spatially synoptic fields of a large number of quantities. And I've listed them here. That includes temperature, salinity, but also sea level, we can see the pathways of fresh water, the fluxes through the inlets, and then a number of quantities that are particularly important also for ecology, suspended sediment concentrations, but also the exposure times of the tidal flats in the Wallen Sea, and the transport of passive traces like larvae. And here in this figure you can see the transport of larvae taken as passive traces, in which you see in the inset the initial position of sort of artificial tracers and then you see after 120 days where they have ended up in this particular year of 2001 because it depends strongly on the wind so in different years you may have different results and the only way to find that out is by doing this kind of modeling and to compare it with the observations and it does not only give spatially synoptic views but it also gives the variations in time scales varying from tides, seasons and years. And so with all these data, the Wallen Systems Research Center really becomes a center of exchange of all the knowledge that we have on the Wallen Sea. Thank you. <laughs>